overheard a couple of the nurses that were in my room and I heard them say that my leg was amputated. I still have no answers. You came here for answers, I don't have any for you. Hi, welcome back. Everybody's favorite time of the month is here. Much better than that other time of the month. Today we're reacting to I Didn't Know I Was Pregnant, the famously entertaining show from TLC. If you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you're not new, consider turning on notifications because everybody knows how horrible it is when you miss that time of the month. I think this joke is already old. This video is also sponsored by Function of Beauty and their brand new skincare line that I am thrilled to tell you about later in this video. December of 2008, 31-year-old Alicia is enjoying the bliss of a new relationship with her boyfriend of six months, Cornelius. But just weeks before Christmas, Alicia's happy life comes crashing down on her when she is struck by an SUV while crossing the street. I overheard a couple of the nurses that were in my room and I heard them say that my leg was amputated. Once I realized that I didn't have a leg and that 80% of my body was affected by the car accident, I got really depressed. Wow. I think this is the most emotionally jarring episode that we have seen, just jumping right into it. That would be incredibly difficult to wake up not even realizing what had happened and then to understand that these massive changes to your body had taken place. I was kind of ashamed of the way my body looked. I didn't know how other people would perceive me. She didn't expect for me to stick around. She really thought I was gonna leave. Sweetie, I'm not going anywhere. But I wasn't gonna leave. Canadians told me they're the same person that I met before the accident. That he always would love me no matter if I have one leg or two legs. That was my Canadians. I can't comment specifically on her case, but sometimes if someone has a very traumatic accident, there are several reasons that they may have to undergo an amputation. It sounds like she was hit by an SUV, so that could just be trauma or a crush injury to that extremity. It obviously could have been injured significantly by the vehicle itself, or sometimes after someone has a really traumatic injury, they can also get something called compartment syndrome where swelling on the internal part of the muscle gets really, really severe and causes a increased pressure that can be life-threatening if it's not released. And then there are cases where people get infections or they lose blood flow to the leg. So I don't know exactly what happened, but it sounds obviously like it was extremely traumatic. I'm interested to hear how this plays into her pregnancy story. True or false, a baby's heart rate is approximately twice that of a healthy adult. Your answer when we return. Thanks to Function of Beauty for sponsoring this video. I am so thrilled to tell you about their brand new skincare line. I personally really struggle to find skincare products. My skin is very dry and very sensitive. I have eyelid eczema as well as eczema around my mouth, which is just really frustrating to treat and triggered by seemingly innocuous events. So I appreciate that I can go on their site, fill out a short quiz about my skincare goals, sensitivities, the makeup that I use, and what I would like in a product, and they put that together just for me. Function of Beauty customizes a cleanser, a serum, and a moisturizer specific to your skincare needs and goals. My skin just feels more hydrated and healthy and moisturized than it has in a really long time. As always, Function of Beauty's products are paraben and sulfate free, as well as animal friendly and 100% vegan. If you'd like to try out Function of Beauty's brand new skincare line and support my channel in the process for a very limited time only during this initial product launch, you can use my link in the description to get 10% off your first skincare bundle. Now, let's get back to the video. True or false, a baby's heart rate is approximately twice that of a healthy adult. Your answer, true. The heart of a newborn baby beats between 130 and 160 times a minute. Alicia gets a grueling nine months of hospital treatment and rehabilitation. As Alicia's recovery progresses, she is able to resume a more physical relationship with Cornelius. I was not using birth control at all. Doctors told her that her medications will affect her cycle. Alicia believes it will be difficult to conceive a child. I noticed that my period was irregular. 
I kind of just wanted to wait it out and see if anything changed. This is interesting. It sounds like she was told that whatever medication she was on could make her cycle unusual. It's hard to speculate exactly what that was, but it could certainly have been like steroids or something. I don't know. I, I'm an OBGYN. Y'all go ask Dr. Mike what medicine she would have been on after a traumatic amputation. Regardless, it sounds like they told her this might make your cycle unusual and she interpreted that as it will be difficult or impossible for me to conceive. I want to touch on this because it's something that happens really often. I hear people say, my doctor said I can't get pregnant. And what the doctor meant by that was, you can't get pregnant, it could be harmful to your health or this medication is dangerous to the pregnancy. And what the patient heard was, you can't get pregnant, you are unable to conceive. And this is a communication problem between the people who work in hospitals and clinics and the patients. And so it's always really important that both we as healthcare providers work on providing not only accurate information, but clear information to our patients. And that if there is any doubt about what's been told, that the patient asks those questions back. And at the end of the day, always, always, always assume that you can get pregnant unless you have a really good reason to think that you can't. Meaning, I don't know, you've had a hysterectomy or you've gone through menopause or you're not having sex with someone who can get you pregnant. Those are about the only reasons you should assume it's impossible. I had gained roughly 10 to 15 pounds. I thought that the recent weight gain was just me getting back to my normal size that I was before I got hit. But one thing that's not getting back to normal is Alicia's periods. Come February, they still haven't returned. So I went to a community clinic and took a pregnancy test. I waited for the results to come in and the nurse told me that the test was negative. You're not pregnant. What you're experiencing is perfectly normal. I thought my cycle would just pick back up in a couple of months and I'll be back on track. Okay, interesting. So she had a negative pregnancy test in February, so I'm interested to see when she ends up having a baby and how that relates back to the timing. It could be that they were using a test that had an upper limit of normal and she was so far along that her HDG levels were high enough that the test didn't register that or it could be a lab error, the sample got mixed up, or it could be just a false negative. That is extremely unusual. You can rely on your pregnancy test most of the time to give you an accurate answer. Obviously, if she was pregnant in February, then she had something go wrong with that test. It is more likely to be human error than testing error. Now, the other part of that is she also could be very early pregnant in February. I don't know how long after that she's gonna end up delivering, so we'll see. But not only does Alicia's cycle not get back on track, her overall recovery gets derailed. I had headaches off and on. Some were so severe I couldn't be in the light. I kinda just thought that it was from the side effects of the medicine. Kanez told me that I was really overdoing it. You, you got a lot on your mind. You're stressing yourself out. You need to just know that things get better. Uh, it's, it's gonna be all right, babe. I totally understand how she didn't think that she was pregnant. Not only does she think she can't get pregnant or that it will be very difficult because of her medication, she's having unusual cycles, which they told her would be a side effect of the medication, and she's now gone to a clinic and they've told her that she's not pregnant. I mean, I can't really blame her for not knowing at this point. I woke up on June 21st, about 8.30 in the morning with some mild stomach cramps. I got up out the bed and went to the bathroom, and then I realized that my cycle started. I got back into the bed, laid down for maybe about an hour or so. I woke up with excruciating pain in my stomach. <gasps> Cornelius! I knew the pain that I was in wasn't normal. Cornelius and Alicia rushed to the emergency room. The pain was so intense, and I'm just looking at Kenny. He's like, why is this happening to me? I can't take it, I just wanted to stop. It really speaks to how an undiagnosed pregnancy and labor can be just, you must think that you're dying. I literally think I say this in every didn't know I was pregnant video, but you must think you're dying. Someone who has been through being hit by an SUV and then in the hospital and in rehab for nine months after having their leg amputated from that is describing this pain as absolutely horrendous and not knowing what's going on. And yeah, I mean, that really just speaks to labor, especially an unprepared labor that you didn't know was coming. I came in and said, I wanted to keep you overnight. 
do one some more test on you. Don't worry, she'll be okay. I asked Cornelius to go home and get me some, change of clothes. The nurse took me up to ultrasound. The technician put the cream on my stomach to begin to roll the thing over the stomach and look at the screen. Oh. I love the reaction of the actor who's playing the ultrasound tech. He's like, oh, uh, hmm, and he just walks out. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Can you imagine what went through that ultrasound tech's head? Because most of the time, ultrasound techs who are working in the ER or doing like acute bedside ultrasounds are not doing pregnancy ultrasounds, especially not when you're far enough along to have like a full grown baby in there. Fascinating and I'm sure jarring. Immediately went out and got the doctor. Alicia? I, I can't be pregnant. He's like, we see a baby head and hear a heartbeat. He said that the baby was in distress and we're gonna have to rush you up to labor and deliver for an emergency C-section. I prefer the OR. I can't be pregnant. I thought, oh my God, this can't be real. Wow, that escalated quickly. So it sounds like they did the ultrasound in the ER and they identified the baby as being in distress, which the only thing you can really see on an ultrasound, especially a bedside ultrasound in an emergency room, would be the baby's heart rate. So maybe the baby's heart rate was on the lower side. Not sure what they saw that made them think that. But saying we're gonna get you up to labor and delivery and with the obstetricians and potentially for an emergency C-section right away, is exactly the right thing to do. So at least they realize what was going on now and not later. The timeline is interesting. So she said the end of June, beginning of February, definitely not enough time for her to be full term and have tested negative because she was just too early pregnant in early February. Even if she was just too early pregnant in early February, the end of June, she probably wouldn't even be far enough along to have even a preemie that did well. So. I'll be interested to see how many weeks she is when this baby's born, but I'm still not sure about that negative pregnancy test. My guess is lab or human error. I thought, I can't be pregnant. I just had a pregnancy test and it was negative. I didn't know what I was facing. I knew the baby was in distress. Is the baby gonna be okay? I was worried that I put the baby at risk because I didn't have any prenatal care. I wasn't eating healthy because I didn't know I was pregnant. Like I say almost every time, we do the best we can with the information we have. You don't have to feel guilty when you took all the right steps to find out if you were pregnant and were left under the impression that you weren't. You only now know and can do the best we can from here on out. It's not fair to harbor that kind of guilt for yourself. The nurse came in and asked if I had anyone that I needed her to call. So I asked her to call my mom and also call Cornelius for him to come back. And the last thing that I remember is the doctor telling me that when you wake up, you'll be a mother. With Alicia sedated, doctors deliver an extremely premature two pound, 11 ounce baby girl. At 31 weeks, the baby is underdeveloped. Two pounds at 31 weeks is really small. So either she had a growth restricted baby, which certainly can happen, especially in an undiagnosed pregnancy, or that gestational age is an overestimate, which would actually make the February pregnancy test make sense. So if she was just like very early, like three weeks or four weeks pregnant, early February when she had that test, she could have been March, April, May, June. March, April, May, June. 26 weeks, 27 weeks, but you know, if they're guessing that the gestational age was 31 weeks, that doesn't line up with the pregnancy test. So I still have no answers. You came here for answers. I don't have any for you. Interesting nonetheless. When I went back to the hospital, when they told me I had a baby I could bleed without here, it was like a ton of bricks hit me. I got to see the baby, most beautiful little girl you can see. She was so fragile because her heart wasn't that strong. I wasn't able to see my baby. Ah, this is hurting my heart. Good grief. 
Kinesin showed me a few pictures that he had taken with my cell phone. She was tiny like a baby doll. That's a really pretty baby. I'm going to be super controversial here and say that a lot of preemies, including my own preemie twins, don't look like beautiful newborns, but that baby is absolutely beautiful. I guess strong work is all you can say to that, right? Like, good job, mom and dad's jeans. Once I saw her, I got attached to her and didn't want to lose her. I pray constantly that my baby will be healthy. She's going to be fine. Her account of waking up and looking at the picture is so heartbreaking. Like, I can't imagine the steps that you must go through to go from just thinking your period started being happy about it and then being in terrible pain and then thinking you will stay overnight in the hospital and your husband leaving. And then before he even gets back, you're under general anesthesia having an emergency C-section because you've in the interim found out that you're not only pregnant, but the baby is premature and in distress. That is absolutely insane. And it sounds like she still has some trauma from that. And I wouldn't expect anything else. It is probably a very traumatic experience. As the days pass tensely by, the baby slowly begins to get stronger and bigger. By the end of six weeks, she is healthy enough to go home. She was at four pounds and 13 ounces. Looking back, the baby was conceived in November of 2009. In that case, the pregnancy test definitely should have been positive in February. So I'm going to stick with the previously said lab or human error. All the symptoms that I have, I thought they were just side effects from the car accident. Alicia had a pregnancy test and it was negative. How could she know? We came up with the name Miracle Lynn because she was born in a miracle. We didn't know she was there. My heart. That is so sweet. Miracle Ann, adorable name. I'm also really happy that TLC has decided to share a few stories that don't just have healthy full-term babies as the outcome because this is reality that undiagnosed pregnancy is more likely to result in a baby that is growth restricted or premature or born under some sort of emergency circumstances than it is to have a full-term healthy delivery. Today, Miracle is four months old and even though her weight is still low at nine pounds, she is in great health. At first, I think Alicia was a little scared, but to see her getting around in her wheelchair, taking care of her baby is like amazing, unbelievable. Alicia's a great mom. She's a very caring mother, and she's very protective of her baby. Kanese has been a great father to Miracle and a great partner to me. I couldn't ask for a better man. I feel like my prayers have been answered and then some. That baby is still stinking adorable. I was gonna say I don't think all babies are cute, but I actually am, I'm, I love babies. Thanks for being here today, guys. I hope that you learned something. When in doubt, take a pregnancy test. If it's negative, it's probably accurate, but don't be afraid to take another one just in case. Check out our sponsor, Function of Beauty, and their brand new skincare line that I love. Be kind to yourself, to each other, to me. In the comments, be kind, and I will see you next time.